A Fox News alert. A suspect is in custody after three police officers were shot just outside Dallas while responding to a suicide call last night. The suspected gunman opened fire on the officers as they approached the front door. All three are expected to make a full recovery, thankfully. But it's just the latest of so many examples of what police face every time they go to work. Now, Attorney General Merrick Garland is acknowledging the nationwide surge in violent crime, and he's announcing a Justice Department plan to send federal resources to support local law enforcement. Meantime, more cities are reversing course on defunding police, with lawmakers in New York City, Los Angeles, and Baltimore proposing more funding for police departments. Pete, I'd like to start with you on this. So we've got L.A., Baltimore, right? They're, they're refunding the police slightly. And then we have cities like Portland, who continue to double down. They're relying on, quote, community nonprofits and park rangers to combat crime. But the reality <laughs> is so many lives have been lost in the last year, so much brutal violence endured. So the question is, will the DOJ really be able to help? Not in this administration, no, because the problem is you've demoralized police departments. You've made it the most dangerous and underappreciated profession in America when they're the people we should be revering and honoring. And alongside the defund the police, they say things like reimagine public safety. You see that all over the place. You just mentioned park rangers and community, you know, community members, whatever that is. Who are you going to call? You, you can call the Ghostbusters. Or if the problem is if you're reimagining and you don't like you don't like uh, you don't like guns. Well, check your Second Amendment. Uh, th there's not much you can do about that unless you want to change the Constitution. Or, you know, what about human nature? You're going to change that? Are we all going to stop being flawed, sinful? Uh, there's evil in the world. And as Edmund Burke said, I was reminded of that quote this morning. Edmund Burke, the philosopher, said, the only thing necessary for evil to flourish is for good men to do nothing. And the good men and women are our law enforcement officers who are doing an impossible job right now, and they're not incentivized to be proactive. And when that happens, you get violence. I'm here in Minneapolis. There's an autonomous zone here, just a few miles from where I'm sitting, yeah. a legitimate autonomous zone where police can't go. Yeah. They are standing down because leadership will not empower them. And it's dangerous. And gunshots rang out in that autonomous exactly zone right. where Garrett Tenney, our Kaylee, reporter, compare was this, this week. new plan with the yes. plan under former President Trump. Yeah, it's remarkable. So this morning, apparently, on a phone call, the DOJ did what any problem is necessitated to find a solution. Uh, they admitted they had a problem. They said that they were absolutely correct that crime numbers are going in the wrong direction. They admitted this on this phone call. Uh, and then they came and they say this. They are going to, quote, put forward a comprehensive strategy to deploy our federal resources, end quote. So my question is, your federal resources, are you going to put federal agents on the ground? Remember when President Trump did this with the National Guard, uh, they were called paramilitary forces by Portland Mayor T Ted Wheeler. They were called Gestapo. These are federal law enforcement officers called Gestapo by Jim Clyburn. This is the respect that was shown to our federal agents who were just trying to maintain order in Portland. So I wonder when they say federal resources, does this mean something like Operation Legend, where federal resources and agents actually went on the ground in Chicago and worked with local law enforcement to arrest people, resulting in 6,000 arrests nationwide, 467 for homicide. What did the Biden administration do when they came in? They tore apart Operation Legend. Are they remaking it? Is this a tacit admission that it worked? Mm -hmm. We will see. Right. Pete Hegseth, you were among those deployed. Um, and Leslie, I'd like to ask you this, however. So Pete mentioned the reimagining public safety. And there in Atlanta, a council member there who's a strong advocate for defunding the police and reimagining public safety, he's running for mayor. And he just got his car stolen in broad daylight by kids in an actually really violent way with him getting dragged. I mean, the, the irony here is not lost. And it frankly sounds laughable, if not, again, for all the lives lost and all this brutal violence. So so how is that, how does that square into play with all of this? I have so much to say. I'll try and be brief. One, this administration has never uh, condoned defund the police. As a matter of fact, President Biden specifically honored the police when he was addressing Congress. And I think a lot of people were shocked uh, when Maxine Waters uh, stood to her feet and clapped after that remark. Second, defund the police has been a very bad message and an inaccurate message from those in my party. Former President Obama said as much, and I agree with him, because what they meant was reform the police, as we talked about that situation with that man who wanted to commit suicide and shot at police, that can be helped with police by mental health professionals. But let's talk about why we have a rise in crime. We have a rise in 
crime for a number of reasons. One, pandemic, higher unemployment. And if we're going to say it's just defund the police, that does not explain in cities with Republican mayors like Miami, like Fresno, uh, like Jacksonville, just three examples, that are also getting help from the Department of Justice. Miami has a 30 percent increase in crime, did not defund their police. It's a red state and a red city as far as political leadership. Uh, and uh, also Jacksonville, they have the highest homicide, homicide rate on record, Republican mayor, Republican governor in a red state. In Fort Worth, Texas, certainly a red state, uh, they have had higher crime numbers than they've seen uh, for, for many, many decades. So it's not just defund the police, but that messaging certainly didn't help the Democratic Party, and it certainly hasn't helped law enforcement. And I think most people agree that overall, the majority of police officers are good and have a very difficult job. Harris, I'll let you take this. Uh, a couple things, Leslie. So let's stay in, in the very red state, as you described, Texas, and let's talk about Democrat uh, Congressman Henry Cuellar, who was saying during the lead up to the 2020 election, presidential election, you, got, you have to stop talking about defund. It's hurting every city. Doesn't it, it, in his state, he said you can't. You can't have an open border. Mm. And then look at what we have now. You can't couple that. He could see it coming. He told me, I can see this coming. If Biden wins, you can't have an open border and at the same time defund the police. And it is less about the political party and more about who's willing to step into the fold. So Senator Tim Scott, hearing crickets all over the place, it is time to sit down and have police reform. It is necessary. That reform has to include making sure that they have the numbers that they need in order to turn this around. And you've named a couple of places where there are Republican uh, leadership, but they're not talking about reimagining through defund. So I would ask you, Leslie, is it time to reimagine Democratic leadership in those cities that are falling apart, like Seattle, Portland, Oregon, Kansas City? I'll stop there. I've been wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, I would love to give you time to answer, but we have to go. I'm sorry.